Good morning, church. It's uh, Jordan, and I'm here with a Monday morning devotional video. Um, yesterday, we talked about sex in church, uh, and uh, it was powerful, and it was uh, an effective ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there was a time of correction, a time of encouragement, uh, and uh, I expect that the church, uh, responding to the leading of the Holy Spirit, will be more frank and open and uh, be willing to talk about what the Bible actually says about sex going forward. Uh, there was just a lot of encouragement that happened. Uh, there was a, a call at the end of service uh, where uh, Denny asked uh, those who had struggled with uh, sexual sin uh, and people who had been impacted by sexual sin to stand and to join him in prayer. And I don't know for sure, but I think almost everybody stood. And so I think uh, just as a word of encouragement to begin this morning, uh, if you happen to be a person who has been living in shame, uh, has been living in a sense of, of guilt, a sense of uh, a, this sort of need to, to maintain sexual sin in secret, uh, the church is the place for you. Uh, it's not a place where you come and those things have to be buried further than they are at any other time in your life. They're, they're place, the church is a place where you come and uh, those things can be exposed, but they can be exposed so that they can be corrected and you can be built up and you can be brought into the wonderful loving uh, grace and light that we get through our Savior Jesus Christ. So that's not the devotional, but uh, it was just uh, amazing to see an open conversation about sex and sexual purity as part of our series on the pursuit of holiness uh, over the, the, we've covered over the last few months. Uh, and see that happen in church, in open, and not in some sort of special <laughs> uh, weeknight type of service where, you know, uh, only select people can attend, but uh, really in, a, in a, a situation where it's open. It, it's something that we can talk about on a Sunday morning, and the Word of God and the Holy Spirit give us power over, uh, and the grace that we receive through Jesus Christ uh, cleanses us from. So uh, really, really encouraging. I, I did really would uh, recommend that you watch the YouTube video if you haven't uh, yet, uh, and uh, just be encouraged and built up by that, and join us next uh, Sunday morning. So um, let's pray, and we'll, we'll jump into the devotion for this morning. Uh, God, I thank you that uh, your uh, power knows no limits. There is no type of sin. There is no uh, sinful nature which is uh, uh, capable of overcoming you. And so wherever we are in our lives, wherever we are in our walk with you, wherever we are in our uh, redemption, I thank you that your promise is true, that you will continue to work with us and through us on this journey towards holiness. Uh, and we just have to get up and say yes and say, I will be obedient and say yes to you. Uh, and you will give us the, the power and the ability that we need to see that thing through. So I thank you, Lord, so much for that. I thank you that your power and your uh, grace uh, is capable of overcoming even sexual sin. Uh, in your name, amen. So I'll be reading this morning from uh, Matthew 15, and I'm going to read verses 3 through 9. Uh, so Matthew 3, uh, 15, 3 through 9 is the, the specific uh, verses we'll be talking about. Um, and uh, this is sort of a, an offshoot of the, the sexual sin uh, uh, teaching and, and sexual purity uh, teaching that we had yesterday. Um, and then also uh, a great blog that was shared uh, by Mackenzie, who's a, a member of our church and a sister in Christ, um, and a blog that she had written. And it's an experience that was true for me. I think so many people over the last 50, maybe even more years, have grown up in a church culture where sexual sin wasn't talked about. There was a very particular lens that was created around sex, but even that was sort of shallow. It uh, really didn't dive into the depth of, of sexual sin uh, and sexual concerns uh, that scripture does, and it didn't really treat it honestly. It was really the church sort of building these high, uh, glossy white walls to hide the realities uh, of sexual sin. And uh, so many people have been negatively impacted by that. And so I wanted to, to read from the, the, uh, the Matthew 15 verses 3 through 9 this morning. And then I'll, I'll explain why in a moment here. But sort of the, the idea of, of how the church has dealt with sexual sin specifically is, is sort of what triggered this thought. So see if you follow with me. He answered them, Jesus answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? 
For God commanded, honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or mother what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And so my thought was, is that I was raised in church, and like many of you, I was raised in a church culture that didn't frankly address sexual sin specifically in the way that the Bible does. Uh, one of the words that uh, Denny shared yesterday uh, in the Sunday service was that the Bible is just uh, replete with open, honest stories and conversations and condemnations about sexual sin. Uh, everything from incest to rape to, uh, to uh, voyeurism and to lustful thoughts. I mean, just this huge gamut of things is covered in Scripture. And it's dealt with openly and honestly in so many churches over the last 60 years, uh, and perhaps longer, have tried to tuck sex uh, in behind closed doors and have really not uh, addressed it frankly and openly and directly in the way that the Bible does. And, and I think there is a, a lot of different topics like that where we take the Word of God and then we try to find a tradition that is more comfortable to us uh, and we try and sort of build this framework of things that sort of really, in terms of the way that they operate, we sort of, I think, think about them as if they were constraining sin. Like, you know, by not talking about sex and, and sexual sin, frankly and openly in church, we somehow are constraining that sin, we're con confining that. But the reality is, is all we're really doing is we're limiting the reach uh, and the power of the Word of God to impact people's lives in this particular area. And I think that's why the church uh, has so much over the last 20 years experienced some of its biggest losses in its ability to uh, minister and reach people who are struggling with sexual sin. If you think about some of the biggest areas where we as Christians are really struggling to minister, they often are tied back to sex and sexuality, sexual sin, sexual identity. Um, and I think that's because we ourselves have chosen tradition over the Word of God. And we've said, you know what, we can't talk about sex uh, in Sunday morning services. We can't have open, honest conversations about sex in uh, counseling relationships with, uh, with our, our leadership. We can't have mentors. We can't have people who will hold us accountable uh, around sexual sin. It's just too dark. It's too dirty. It's too untoward for church. And God's word is so powerful, and God himself is so powerful, and his Holy Spirit is so powerful that uh, all of these sins are subject to him through the grace that we receive in Jesus Christ. And so uh, I would encourage you this morning, uh, if there is a, a particular area of your life where you are uh, uh, nervous, you're uncomfortable, uh, you feel shame or you feel guilt, uh, to, to have an open and honest conversation with someone else, another Christian brother or sister, uh, about uh, about that uh, that particular area of your life, I would encourage you to take the time to do so. Uh, if you are specifically struggling with sexual sin, or you have struggled with sexual sin, and you've experienced victory through the Word of, of God and through the, the faithfulness of Jesus Christ and the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, I'd encourage you to be open and honest about that. Um, our, our church is, I think, uh, just really beginning to experience the grace of God and the power of God in this area because we are becoming uh, more faithful to the Word of God. And we're, we're starting to uh, step up and, and recognize that, hey, the Bible is willing to talk frankly about sex. Um, and by so doing, we, we take away the power of the devil uh, when we actually try and hide it and bury it and we try and, and pretend like there is no issue there. So, and that sex is not the only area, right? Uh, there, there are plenty of different areas where we don't like to talk about things. I think we're uncomfortable talking about things. And I think uh, those areas too, we need to sort of uh, pull off the band-aid and allow the light in uh, and allow the light to disinfect. And so uh, whether or not it is sexual sin in your life or something else, uh, but you just are, are feeling uncomfortable, you feel uh, there's too much guilt and shame attached to it, I would encourage you to open up and, and to communicate with someone else. I, I know that God is faithful. Uh, I know that he will work in you. Uh, he will be faithful to you as you're faithful to him. 
Uh, and as we trust him more, as we show our faith more in these areas of our life, we become more effective to minister to those we care about uh, and to provide an opportunity to connect people we care about to the, the God and the Savior that we love. So that's my encouragement to you this morning. Uh, get rid of those traditions that aren't scriptural. Read your Bibles if you want to know what those are. Um, it's not a trick just to read your Bibles. I'm just saying, you know, the, the, the whole fundamental thing about who we are is, is based in this word. And so read your Bibles uh, and learn about what God has to say. Um, in any area that you find that uh, we are leaning into tradition instead of the word of God, uh, that is the time when you need to uh, look and say, hey, the Bible says this, I'm going to do the Bible, what the Bible says instead. So uh, I hope that's encouraging for you. I hope it's challenging for you. Um, Chris had mentioned, just quickly as a, as a last uh, sideline, Chris had mentioned that if you're in a married relationship and you're in a situation where sexual sin is a, is a challenge for you, he had encouraged you to uh, make your marriage vibrant uh, and lively. And uh, one of the things I would encourage you to do is join us for midweek uh, on Thursdays at 6.30. We have a relationship class, which uh, one of our elders, Dan Bunker, is, is leading. Um, and there's a good group of people there who are, are watching along with a video series and, and just interacting with each other. But that's a really fantastic place to start. Um, to, to keep that marriage vibrant and to help uh, defeat sexual sin in your life or overcome some of the consequences of it in your life. So I'd encourage you to join us this Thursday, uh, midweek, 6.30 p.m. Uh, we have something for the entire family. Uh, and then also uh, this Sunday uh, uh, at church, we're going to have an all-church prayer uh, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. So join us for either of those things. Uh, we really look forward to having you with us. Uh, we are really looking forward to, to seeing more of what God is doing in our lives. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful week.